By the end of this video, you will be able to randomly draw decorations onto your tile map with just holding down the mouse button. We'll also be taking a look at how we can randomly draw some trees that not only look cool, but also parallax as our player moves at different speeds. Let's get started. To get started, we're going to be using this sprite asset here from the 2D pixel art platformer asset we downloaded from the Unity Asset Store in a previous video. I'll include it in the link to this video tutorial as well, just in case you're joining here. And within here, it has some decorations already pre-built in. This is the same pack we used for our parallaxing background, by the way. We're going to put our decorations on a different platform layer. So I'm going to go to our grid, right click, and go to 2D object, tile map, and add a new rectangular tile map. And I'm going to call this decor tile map. We're also going to put our decorations on a different tile palette. So we're going to go over here to game tile map, which should be called game palette. We'll rename that momentarily. Go to create new palette, and we'll call this decor palette, and then we'll create it. And I'll put this in the tile maps folder over here. And then we'll go into the tile maps folder. And I'm going to create a new folder in here for the tiles. Decor tiles. And we can also rename this to uh, game palette. There we go. And now we're going to go into this decor palette up here. And we're going to put some of these sprites in. Now, I don't want to drag this entire sprite asset into here because I don't want to add all of them. Number one, if we look at the inspector, we're going to see that some of these sprites in here are massively different sizes. What I'm interested in are the ones that are 16 by 16 pixels because that's the same size as our tile map tiles. And the ones that are 16 by 16 are these guys down here and also these fence posts. So I'm just gonna hit X on here going to open up, I'm going to scroll down and look for those guys. So here they are down here. Highlight all of these. I'll highlight also the fence posts. Just hitting control and adding them. We'll go to the tile map and then we'll just drag this part these particular ones in. Go back to the assets folder, tile maps, and I'll go into decor tiles and save them in here. Now, just like that, if I was to click on the decor tile map, enable gizmo so I can see the grid. Uh, if I was to draw any of these, I could basically create them on here. Of course, I also need to make sure that the tile map has the proper sorting layer if we want to actually see any of them. So I'll put this on game. Our platform tiles are on order and layer zero, so I'll just put these on minus one to make sure they're always appearing behind. But it would kind of be a pain to figure out, oh, I want to put some roses here and this here. You could do it that way, of course. but. I'm rather lazy when it comes to decorating, so I'd rather just make it easy on myself. To do this, I'm going to right click here, go to create 2D tiles and make a new rule tile. And I'm going to call this random decor. I'm going to click on the rule tile, go into the inspector, and under the default sprite, I'll just pick one of these. It doesn't matter. I'll add the rows, for instance. And then I'll add just a single rule tile. And within here, I'll put the rows again as a sprite to use. But now under output, I'm going to choose random. I'll expand this to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to add a size of how many decors do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm not going to use the signpost for this. So I'll set the size to 13. And then I'll just drag in each of these decors into one of these tiles. There we go. I'm going to go back to the tile palette now and just drag this random tile rule tile in. And now if I select it and go make sure that I have my decor tile map selected, I can start adding them in here. And just like that, I'm getting some random decorations. Of course, I probably don't want every single tile to have a decoration on it. That might be a bit overkill. So I can go back to this rule tile, look at the inspector, and then I can just increase its array size to maybe say something like 20, and just make sure that there's some empty tiles in here too. And the more empty tiles I have, the less likely it is that a decoration piece is going to spawn whenever I draw something. 
So I can keep drawing and I may get something. Here's some. And so if I want to increase the likelihood, obviously I would just remove some of these empty sprites or I would add more empty sprites if I want to make it less likely. You could also change the noise, which would change the decorations that are going to show. But just keep in mind, this will affect everywhere that you've used this particular rule tile on every map. So it's probably better to pick a noise that you're happy with and then just stick with that for the rest of the using of the same rule tile, unless you want to change all your decorations that you've used. Next, let's go ahead and add some random trees. This will be similar, but it will require a few additional adjustments to get it to work properly. We're going to right click on the grid and create another new empty tile map. So tile map, rectangular, and we'll call this tree tile map. And now we'll make a new palette, create new palette, and we'll call this tree palette. And I'll create this in the same place, which is in my tile maps folder. And then we're going to go here, we'll make a new folder within here as well, and we'll call it tree tiles. I'll scroll back up to this pack, but I'm going to take a look at it again in the sprite editor. And I'm going to note that while we have a few trees, they're all different sizes. Ideally, what we want is for all of our tiles to be the same size, uh, especially in the case of us using a rule tile. Uh, we want when we want to paste them, paint them in, we don't want their positions to end up being very different. Or in this case, at least the size doesn't matter as much as does the pivot point. Right now, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, you can see they're all different sizes, so they're going to appear at different points. What we can do to fix this is to go to the tile map itself, go into the inspector, go to the sprite editor, and we can change their pivot points. So basically right now we're saying that when we paint them, it should paint where this blue circle is. Let's just go for all of these pivot points and change them to bottom center. So the bottom of the tree is where we're going to end up painting them at. So I'm just going to change that for each one here. There we go. And then I'm going to hit apply. And now if I was to paint them, now they're going to paint here. Uh, of course, I also need to set some empty sprites because I don't want to be painting trees on every single tile. Maybe 20 sounds good, and then we can get some nice randomness. That's even a little too much. Maybe try 30. Yeah, that's far fewer. But you still may get variable results, so there is the possibility that you might just want to paint trees manually. Again, the choice is up to you. Finally, in order to make them parallax, we're just going to take this tree tile map and in our scene view, we're going to just push its Z position back. Uh, it will be easier, of course, to see in the game view because this is how we have it set up. And if you're not seeing the same effect, maybe it might be because you're joining on this lecture and you haven't been following along. We also have our main camera set to perspective instead of orthographic. So basically we're using a 3D camera in this game so it can render depth. And of course, just like that, then we have parallaxing trees in our background uh, and we have decorations at our game level. You can play around with this, of course, you can change the scaling and whatever else you wanna do but it's a very cool way to just randomly add some decorations into the level without having to give it too much manual thought. In the next video, we are going to add our first enemy into the game who can move left and right and change directions whenever he collides with a wall. See you there.